Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and welcome to another live paper crafting class here on Facebook. If you're watching this at a later time, you might not be able to see a response from me when you comment. Actually, I'm really not good at commenting when you comment, so um, you might think that you're live, but check the time. Um, sometimes you, you check, you'll see the video um, shared later on and um, <laughs> And you'll comment and think that I'm there, but um, we're gonna we're gonna record live right now. I'm a little flustered. I have to admit, what happened was we had an internet issue, and I'm not sure what it is. I I shut the internet down on my main computer though, so hopefully that'll give more juice to the stuff I'm using right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm back, and I'm so sorry. It, it, it disconnected. So you could be watching this um, later on on Facebook. You could be watching it on YouTube later on. But anyways, just know that um, I recorded this live on September 19th at 11 a.m. Central Time. And I'm excited to share because I just did a demonstration in front of almost 300 demonstrators in Medina, Minnesota at a, an event called Creative Connections. And I'm... Um, I'm gonna bring that to you. Not all of it, because some of it's just demonstrator related, but I'm gonna show you the suite of products that I got to show off, and I'm gonna show you a lot of the samples and walk, through, walk you through one of the cards. Yes, I'm back. Thanks, you guys, for being patient with that. I think we're starting, oh, almost 15 minutes later than we, need, than we should have. <laughs> okay, so let me first bring you to the table, because the table, is going to have um, the products. I'm gonna show you all the products and then I'm gonna give you measurements for the card that I'm actually gonna to share today. All right, here we go. So this is the Frosted Floral Suite, not all of it, but um, that's what I'm going to show you today. I was so excited that I got to show the Frosted Floral Suite at this event. First of all, let's start with the stamp set. The stamp set is a floral stamp set that appeals to almost every single stamper out there. I don't know anyone who doesn't own more than 10 uh, flower stamp sets themselves already just because they love flowers. Um, the stamp set is also on trend. We have two different fonts within a couple of the sentiment images and it's very trendy. We also have a very nice watercolor look on a lot of the images. It's a versatile stamp set. Um, you have flowers that could be used, of course, during the more frosty months, but you also could use them in different colors, whatever. You could make them um, work for spring and summer, um, all that kind of thing. It could be used year round. Um, the, uh, let's see, what else? The, let's see, versatile images, I already mentioned that. Okay, the designer paper. Let's move to the designer paper. So the designer paper, yum, it's so pretty. First of all, it's also versatile. It includes the loud, um, bright, colorful patterns like this. It also has very subdued monochromatic patterns like this one and this one and this one. Um, the designs can be wintry, of course, because of the frosted look, but many of the patterns can also be used for summer, winter, um, spring. Uh, they're feminine. You even have a couple masculine patterns in here. They're pretty enough for weddings, but they're also simple enough for everyday occasions. Just gorgeous paper, and it's unique. The paper is very unique because this is unlike something they've ever done before. They frosted both sides of it. So not only are there flowers, but it's shimmery on both sides. That's like putting sugar on something that's already totally sweet. It's like, ooh, even more, yum. <laughs> and. Um, the paper with the sentiments together, of course, make very pretty Christmas cards that are non-traditional with those colors and stuff. But if you wanted to have that red and green look, you could always substitute that paper out. Boo-hoo, why would you do that? But you could substitute it out for um, more traditional looking papers, which this is a beautiful one we have in the holiday catalog as well. And then use, of course, the other items, the stamp set, the dies from that suite to make very pretty traditional Christmas cards. The papers are also very colorful. Um, let's bring in this little cheat sheet chart here. So we have all of these colors that are listed on the back of the designer paper. So when you get the designer paper, you flip it over and it lists every single one of these colors. We have the Blackberry Bliss, the Mary Merlot, Blushing Bride, Powder Pink, Pear Pizzazz, Pineapple Punch, just in case you can't read these, Tranquil Tide, Mint Macaron, Soft Sea Foam, Soft Suede, Night of Navy, Mossy Meadow, Gray Granite, Whisper White. Try to say that all in one breath. 
those are a lot of colors. That's a lot of colors that coordinate with these papers. But you can also, of course, add in neutrals. Early Espresso and Basic Gray look fabulous with the colors that are in this. And then I even found some other ones. So Fresh Fig, Berry Burst, Shaded Spruce, Coastal Cabana, Lemon Lime Twist. I see a hint of all of those colors as well. So it's a very, very colorful combination of um, colors in here. Colorful combination of colors. Um, this is a cardstock pack. You can get eight and a half by 11 sheets of these cardstock colors. There's Blackberry Bliss, Gray Granite, and Tranquil Tide, and they go very well with these papers. I do want to mention that this paper does not come in six by six. It comes in 12 by 12, and you get 12 sheets, two of each style. Notice that they are double sided. So these two sheets here are the same piece. So, um, but I only have like the six by six samples in front of you right now so that you can kind of see a sampling of them a little bit better. Okay, all right, we're gonna move those aside. And I do wanna point out, cause I saw some of you are already sharing, thank you so much, that if you share this broadcast while we are live, um, that really helps me because it brings more people to my paper crafting classes. And I love sharing, that is my passion. I love to teach and share. And um, also, if you comment that you shared, then you get entered into a prize drawing. Any comment, in fact, gets you into the prize drawing at the end. I have two wonderful prizes to give out, and those prizes will include hand stamp cards from this suite today. So you'll want to comment. At least tell me where you're from. Um, tell me a silly joke. Give us a tip that I might forget to share or that I don't even know about. And keep in mind too, that I'm really bad at reading comments as we go. I, I just, they're off to the side here. You'd think I'd be able to notice them. They're on my iPad as I'm, as I'm broadcasting. And I just, I'm so bad. So I'm so sorry if I don't respond to your comments while we are broadcasting, but I promise you that I will try my best to comment after if you have a question. And also know that commenting to every one of your comments actually takes up a lot of my time, but I do read through every one of them, so I will um, see every comment. So thank you for, for commenting, for sharing. <laughs> hey, Carol, I'm gonna share your card today, by the way. All right, so these are the dies. <laughs> thank you for that swap. These are the dies called Frosted Bouquet Framelits, and these coordinate with the stamp set. This is what they look like when they're all cut out and they're smart dies because you get two small flowers, you get two little, um, what are these called, thistles, you get two of those so that when you're die cutting and creating your cards, you don't have to run them through the big shot too many times, right? So that's super smart. It goes, it makes it easier for mass production. These little dies here though, the frame ones, notice the small one in the middle, it's super thin, but it's super strong. And if you layer those together instead of die cutting them separately like that, you can actually get a little frame if you want. Nice, huh? So get smart dies. And these are the images that will actually coordinate with the dies in the sets. So you have this, the large rows, the small rows, the thistle, this long branch, this um, cluster of, of foliage here. This one here actually does not coordinate with the die. I mean it coordinates but it doesn't match up with the die so when this is die cut you're gonna have two different branchy looks so that's actually a plus you get two different looks that way and I think oh I have to show you the fun accessories that are in this bundle as well so let's let's move these out of the way we'll actually need the dies so I'm gonna make sure they're handy we get um, boxwood wreaths and we have the green ones in the regular catalog but these are the iridescent white ones they're very pretty and shimmery so I have a couple samples where I use them and they're on wire and they fold out into a little string so you don't have to keep them in a wreath shape. Also in that suite of products is uh, a roll of velvet ribbon. This is our Tranquil Tide velvet ribbon. We have some rich razzleberry in the main catalog and it's really, it's like velvet. You feel it and it's soft. It's super pretty. Then um, do the papers coordinate with the dyes? Good question Mary Jo. Uh, I have not checked. <laughs> to be honest, we have a lot of papers lately that do coordinate with the dyes, but this is very, very um, painted and watercolory. So I would think that that answer is no, because um, they're they're all different sizes on this paper. I don't think any of them were meant to die cut with the. Um, let me look at the thistle one real quick here. Hang on. 
Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Um, this one here would be the only one that I would suspect, but again, no, it's, they're all different sizes. So I would, I would have to say no on that. Thanks for asking that question at a time where I looked up. <laughs> all right. So we got the velvet ribbon and then we have these, these are my favorite. These are called clear and frosted epoxy droplets. And you can see how these look like they're see-through and these look like they're frosted. They're, um, less shiny and, um, they're not completely see-through, like you can't bring your finger underneath and see your finger underneath them, but they're clear as far as going through them from the side, okay? <laughs> All right, so sweets are magical. I just wanna point out something in my well-loved camera, or my camera, my catalog. My cameras are well-loved too. But in your catalog on pages 36 and 37, you can see it's well-loved, right? We have some incorrect information. This is actually one of the catalog corrections in, um, for the holiday catalog. They, they mentioned to us demonstrators to point out that the um, prices are wrong on the framelits and on the, uh, the bundles. The bundles are basically when you buy the stamp set and the dies together, you save 10%, but those prices are off. So you'll want to go in the online store. Uh, the dies are 33 and the bundles are either $49.50 for clear mount or $56.50 for wood mount. So just wanted to point that out to you. Let's dive in and look at samples. Okay, so the first samples that I shared during the event were, oops, I'm not gonna show that one yet. Did I show it? You weren't supposed to see that one yet. <laughs> Vertical stretch fun fold cards. And um, you have seen these before because I did a whole video on my page with the vertical stretch fun fold card back in March. And what I did for the demonstrators is I shared this card fold with them, showed them how to make it. Um, I'm gonna just refer you to either my blog or to a past video back in March where I shared the vertical stretch fun folds so that you can see how to make these fun fold cards that go like this. This one here that I'm holding in my hand is actually gonna be one of the prizes um, or it's gonna go along with one of the prizes that I give today, this nice fall looking one. This one I would consider more Christmas because it does have a more traditional look. And then I also shared this one, which is also very Christmassy, but um, could be more New Year's-ish as well because it's very festive and colorful. And then I shared this version, which, ta-da, again, it doesn't have to be Christmas or fall. This is um, more of a wedding-ish looking card made with the images, dies, and paper, um, and of course, the embellishments from that suite. So those are the vertical, fun, uh, vertical stretch fun fold cards. I'm gonna show you a couple more, and then we're going to actually dive into a card, okay? Here is another set of cards that I received from fellow demonstrator, Carol Lucas, she's one of my stampers with Art Stars, and she had um, this design for one of our swaps, but she made extra, and she made extra and used two different color patterns in the cards, so I, of course, had to take two cards, so I gifted her back an extra card from my stash, and I think she was happy with that. I hope you were, Carol. <laughs> she hasn't complained yet, but I just love that you can see two different versions of the same card just by changing the colors out. Aren't those fun fold cards? I love it. And she's got Wink of Stella on the roses at the top there. Very sparkly. Another sample that I shared during my event was this bag. And I've done these before also in video. So if you're interested in learning how to make one of these bags, this is a collapsible. So it's got a little seam in the back here and it folds down flat like a grocery bag. Um, so it's a collapsible um, Collapsible bag, a gift bag. Uh, the, 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 the bag is made with two sheets of the same designer paper. So if you're gonna make these, you're gonna need to probably get two packs of designer paper because you won't wanna just use up two of the full sheets instantly like that, right? So make sure that uh, you have enough paper for that. You need two full sheets of the same kind. Um, and again, I have a video on how to make these. And then the tag is made with the other products in the suite. So I brought in some extra cardstock and um, so in the soft suede and early espresso colors, and then stamped and die cut a couple branch pieces, put some frosted epoxy um, droplets on there, 
The hole at the top is made with that trio punch. There's a, a fun little um, hole at the top that's a nice shape for this velvet ribbon. And then I just strung the velvet ribbon through and tied it onto the bag with some white twine. This sentiment that is in the frame, it coordinates with the frame, it's so awesome. This sentiment is from the painted glass stamp set and there are actually three sentiments in there that would work with this size frame really well. So that's just an example of bringing in another stamp set uh, with sentiments so that you can use this, this floral stamp set for so many other things besides just congratulations or wishing you well. This bag, by the way, I got the idea from Samantha Clayton from Mixed Up Crafts, so she also has a video. And my video can be found on my blog that I posted on June 28th. Couple more cards. Um, love this one too. This was by another Stampers with Art star, Marcine Ingram. She gave this to me for my birthday. I loved um, that she used that wonderful, uh, imp uh, the dynamic impressions embossing folder, the flower one, and did that on the metallic paper. So this is the gold metallic paper. And then she used the um, other set of designer paper that's in our annual catalog that has lots of flowers for the little accent at the bottom here. So I had to recreate this card with the frosted floral paper. And I used the silver metallic paper, put on some of the clear epoxy droplets at the top. And um, then on the inside, I put, of course, some extra paper, used the painted glass stamp set, and made a bunch of birthday cards for some people in our team. Marcine Ingram was one of them. <laughs> so she got to have her card back, but in a different style. Now in her card, she has a full sheet of this flower paper behind here, but I could not afford to make all the birthday cards with doing a full sheet behind because I was, of course, creating for the Creative Connections event and I wanted to make sure that I had enough for all my samples. So I got smart and I did her card just slightly different and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So we're gonna flip to the computer. Let me see if I can pull, oops, I have to get it off. My computer's behind me right now, you guys. Normally it's in front of me, but my desk is completely full. So here we go. Let's switch to the computer. There we go. So we're gonna make a fun card, a, a different version of Marcine's. And these are the measurements that you will need for Knight of Navy cardstock, Whisper White cardstock, frosted floral designer paper, and you can really use any of the sheets because you'll see a couple samples that I'll have and then metallic edge um, ribbon. And depending on which paper you choose, I think the silver goes really well with a lot of them, so that's what I used. The other supplies that you'll need will be, of course, the stamp set, the framelits, so I'm gonna do some die cutting and embossing while we are live here, the Knight of Navy Classic ink, the blends marker in dark, and of course the trimmer big shot, embossing folder, all of these other things uh, listed below here. Oh, I don't know why I have that there. Let's just delete that, there we go. <laughs> so let's switch back and we're gonna go ahead and get the desk ready here and we're going to start our card this is so much fun I just love this okay so let's go ahead and uh, do picture in picture here we go we're gonna first start with our Knight of Navy cardstock if you're a beginning stamper you actually can survive this card you can do it I promise you um, it's it's simple but it just requires a lot of product including the big shot which is a high priced item so don't get overwhelmed because you don't need the big shot for every single card that you make out there. But follow along with me and you'll see that stamping actually is a very simple thing to do. Here's our full sheet of 8.5 by 11. We have our paper trimmer, which is a wonderful paper trimmer, and we're going to cut our paper in half the long way. So on my paper trimmer, I have two blades. I have one that is the cutting blade, and I change this out every once in a while because it gets dull. And then I have the scoring blade, and on that I write the word score so that I don't forget and accidentally cut my paper when I should be scoring. So we're gonna bring it to the four and a quarter inch mark. And you can look at the measurements right across the top, four and a quarter inches. And we're just gonna make sure it's all lined up on the side here as well, and slice. And then we're gonna take set one of those aside for later because we could make two cards out of that if we want. We're gonna bring our card horizontally in the trimmer and we're now gonna use the scoring blade. Half of 11 inches is five and a half, so we're gonna bring it now to the five and a half inch mark. And we're gonna press through with the scoring blade and we have now cut our card base. It's ready to go. These fit our medium size envelopes. 
The other pieces that you'll need, I did mention already, are um, another piece of Knight of Navy that goes inside and the measurements I already shared with you. And this one fits right on top. This will also go inside the card. Um, then you'll need, of course, your layer of designer paper. And then you'll need a scrap of, uh, this is a really huge scrap, you don't need that much. <laughs> you'll need a scrap of Knight of Navy and a scrap of Whisper White and then a smaller Whisper White for the front of the card. Now there's designer paper on the front of the card too, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring in the trimmer again and show you how to cut this. You could use either side, doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you how to cut this so that you can get two sheets from one. Okay, here we go. So our paper, our designer paper is cut to four inches wide. And the reason why is when you have a 12 inch piece of designer paper, you wanna make sure that you get the most out of it, right? Because it's, it's pretty stuff, you wanna use it right. So instead of having it span the whole four and a quarter inches across, we're just gonna do four inches. And um, the other direction is five and a quarter, so we can get six sheets like this out of one paper. We're gonna bring our trimmer, our, our paper into our trimmer at five eighths inches on all four sides. So if you're looking on this side of the trimmer, which is where I'm looking, it's going to be right before or right after the half inch mark here. So there's half inch and then a one inch mark. And you're going to bring it right after that half inch mark on the, not the first tiny, tiny mark, but the second one. That's going to give you your five eighths inches. Okay. Then when we press, press this down, if you look to this side, it's going to say three and three eighths inches, but we don't want to keep track of these because these will change. We just want to keep track of that five eighths inch on this side. And then we'll press this down and we'll make sure that we're slicing. We're gonna slice all the way up, not all the way up, sorry, I said that wrong. You're gonna slice um, into the, the designer paper from the four and five eighths inch mark. So now we're looking here, let me brighten this up for you. We're gonna slice from this area here almost up to the top over here too. So what we're doing basically is we're leaving 5 eighths inches on the top and the bottom. We're not going to slice all the way through. And if you don't know, go to the half inch mark. You can do that too and then just use your paper snips to, to trim it in even further. So you don't have to get these exact measurements. So we're going to slice, leaving 5 eighths inches on the top and the bottom. You can see that there. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we brought it to the 5 eighths inch on this side. And again, slice from the four and five eighths to the five eighths up here, or just close to it. And then again, bring in your, your snips or your scissors later. Now we're gonna turn it this way and do the same thing. So we've got five eighths inches and we're going to slice again. Please let me know, by the way, if we're still live because we did have those internet issues and I'm really worried that I'm losing people again. I'm not seeing comments. <laughs> Hopefully it's because you guys are just watching. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. So now we don't have to worry about measurements on this arm here. We just have to look at the cuts that we already created. Okay, hey, Gal's with me. Okay, thanks, Gail. Um, so now we're gonna slice from that cut up to that cut, making sure that we're still on the 5 8 inch mark over here. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. So we're cutting a frame. And if you cut it with 5 eighths inches all the way around, what's gonna happen is this piece that comes out of the middle is gonna be exactly four inches wide, just like our other piece that goes on the front of the card, like that, okay? And these are both measured to the same size, four by two and three fourths. We have our two designer papers. Let's go ahead and mount these. Actually, I'm gonna pull in a different one because that's not the one we're using. We're gonna bring in, here it is, this one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this on the inside of the card. Yes, I think this one actually goes better with navy. So we'll open up our card base and we'll just lay that in there like that. We can also put our other two layers on the inside. Thanks, Michael, for responding. Yes, good. I'm, I'm so glad that I'm still with you guys. It shows that I'm still with you, but I did freak out a little bit when I did, got disconnected. That was really strange. Okay, so now we're going to place the white 
onto the navy here and this will just go on the inside of the card now some people like to put photos on the insides of their christmas cards or on the front with any hand stamp card there's always an extra space for a photo you could put a photo up there if you wanted to or this could become the photo area and you could put the sentiment up there so keep that in mind all of you people who love photo cards for christmas you can still stamp and make photo cards okay so there's the inside the inside is done the outside now we have to pull out the big shot but we have to stamp a little first so we've got these pieces for the outside of the card we're gonna emboss this one we're gonna stamp this one let's pull in our knight of navy ink love this color it's a beautiful blue and um, slide that in place grab our sentiment this is our holiday sentiment from that stamp set we're just gonna ink it up and down and we're gonna stamp it and it doesn't have to be straight because we're gonna die cut it right so we're just gonna stamp it down set that aside I'm washing that later <laughs> close up our ink pad and now we're gonna grab our dies we're gonna grab our two frame dies for this this one's gonna go on here and this one's gonna go on our Knight of Navy scrap this one is gonna be embossed with an embossing folder that I have behind me so let's grab that bring it in I have to move these make sure that they're out of the way okay here comes the big shot <laughs> all right so here we go let's take and put our when you get the big shot by the way for beginning stampers um, you get the platforms you get the cutting mats you get the machine for embossing you do not need this platforms so, oops sorry you do not need this platform so we're gonna move it out of the way because this makes a really thick area so we're gonna take our two cutting mats put one down we have our embossing folder here we always want to bring embossing folders into the big shot with the fold first that but that part should enter the big shot first it's just it's gonna save your 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 embossing folders and then we'll just place this on the inside and because our paper is the same either way it doesn't matter which side we're we're embossing but if you do have a front side and a back side to cardstock then check your dies to make sure it's going to emboss the way that you want it to emboss so this will just make some fun snowfally look it's going to be great so we're going to put that on top that's our other clear mat and we're just going to crank the handle and it does all the work for us because otherwise it would be really hard to sit on top of it, you know, put heavy weights on top of this to get this look. It does it. This embossing machine is just awesome. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So it looks like snow falling. So that paper is done. Now we need to die cut. So we're going to bring our, our platforms back in. We'll move our embossing folder out of the way. But we're going to bring this one back in because we need to lift it up a little bit. Dies are thinner than embossing folders, so we have to give it a little lift. Now we can place our cardstock pieces in here, and we'll just put that frame right around the words, like so. Hopefully that's straight. Oh, there we go. Okay, and then we place this down, and I like to I like to aim it in, kind of diagonal first, like a, you know, angled in, and then. Once it's where I want it, I just put it down really firm and hold on to this so that this doesn't move. Then we'll crank it and it's cutting. That noise is cutting the paper. It's awesome. Look what happened. So now we have these pieces ready to go for our card. Let's move this out of the way. By the way, with our late start, I have no clue what time we started and uh, <laughs> That's maybe not a good thing, because I like to talk, as the people at Creative Connections knew. They found out. I actually used up too much time. All right, let's go ahead and put these pieces down. So we're going to use our snail adhesive and just run it along the back, like we did with our pa papers on the inside of the card. And I want the snow to look like it's really full up on top and coming down um, less as it sprinkles closer to the floor or to the ground. So that can go there. And then this piece. We'll just go on top of it like that. Now we need to add some ribbon. This is our ribbon and we could just, we could just use it as is, 
but, and I'm going to zoom in on this for you, but watch this. These are our Stampin' Blends markers, and you can actually change color of your ribbon by just running your marker along like this. It's an alcohol-based marker, so it does kind of like what Sharpie markers do. do. Um, it'll dry on several surfaces. It's awesome stuff. And you just keep going along here. We're coloring the whole length of the ribbon so that we're getting a, a navy and silver ribbon. Is this pretty or what? Now I could have used the other navy marker because they come in two different colors. You can buy them separately, these blends, or you can get them um, together as a combo. But um, I'm using the dark one because I think it coordinates with the cardstock really well. The other one was slightly lighter. Watch the other side. It already colored the other side as well. I didn't have to worry about coloring both sides. It goes completely through. We're going to set that aside for just a second because we want it to, to cool off a bit. Let's layer these together with some snail adhesive. Just go one on top of the other. And then we're going to use an adhesive called Dimensionals. And I want you to just put one on the top and one on the bottom. I do that for most of my cards where there's going to be ribbon behind because I don't stick my ribbon down before I tie the bow. I do it um, after if I want to, and sometimes I don't even do it. But this allows me to adjust the ribbon and move it, okay? Let's zoom back out a bit here. Okay, so that will go right here on our card. The ribbon's gonna go across the middle, and it's pretty dry by now. So we're just gonna take and go like this, and we can tie it right in the middle if we want to, and again, we'll adjust later. So we'll go like that, hold it down with your finger or have a partner, Take the bottom one, turn it into a loop. Take the top one. Here, let's zoom in because I, I love ribbon tying and I want you guys to see how to do this. We're gonna do it again. Right over left, take the top one, bring it down and you're just folding it in half. And then this one, you're gonna fold in half the opposite way and bring it straight up, okay? Then you cinch it and you have somebody hold it for you if you can't hold it with that extra finger. You take the bottom one, you bring it into a little loop or a rabbit ear, is what I call it. There's no twists in the ribbons. This one's gonna come around this side like that, and it's gonna make another little loop going through the hole that way. Oops, I didn't do it tight enough, hang on. When I go slow like that, it's harder for me to do it. Hang on, okay, here we go. So we're gonna bring it through like that, and as you pull, this one's gonna go that way, and that one's gonna go this way, like that and then you can adjust. So you can take and hang on to one loop while you pull the tail, or hang on to the other loop while you pull the tail, like that. And that's how you can get your ribbon to tie. Now, when you wanna adjust it, you just take and open up your card, give it a little curve, and you can adjust your ribbon off to one side, like that. Fun, huh? Now, the other card that I'm gonna show you, I actually did a different kind of bow because I wanted the bow to go this way instead. So I just had to adjust how I was doing it. But this will work as well. And this is the way that most people want to tie their ribbons. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna bring in my sharp scissors, which I always label with a ribbon. And I'm gonna trim the ends at a slight angle, like that. It's so sweet. And then we'll take and peel off the backings from our dimensionals. Throw those on the floor. Bring this over here and stick it down. And again, if we have to adjust our bow later, we can because the adhesive is not on top of the actual ribbon. Another um, embellishment that I wanna bring in is rhinestones. This rhinestone here, and you probably won't be able to tell in this video here, but this one was colored with the dark navy and this one was colored with the light. Either one works well, but I liked the dark one a lot. So it's a, it's a non-porous surface, right? But you can still color on them with your blends markers. These, these are awesome. They're, I, I have to do a video on blends for you guys. So then you just peel one up. Oops. Oh, this is where I should bring in that pick tool. We have a pick tool, a new tool. <laughs> Let's just try it out. Because Rachel, oh, here we go. Stick it on there. There, now we have it on our spatula. This is awesome. Then we just press it down. Oh, I do like that. 
I have not done that with my rhinestones yet. I'm so used to doing um, the scissors technique, but this is pretty cool. Oh my goodness sakes. Yeah, a spatula is nice. I like this. Okay, there, we have another one over there. <laughs> Yay for the pick tool, it's called Take Your Pick. So there we go, there is our finished, oops, there we go. There's our finished card. I have another sample um, doing the same cuts. And that's, of course, with this paper, right? So that's this one here, doing the same kind of cuts. I liked this one a lot more, though. <laughs> but here's the galvanized metallic paper and then the frosted epoxy droplets. Um, let's zoom out just a tad here. And I want to show you just a few more samples before I sign off. We've also got prizes, okay? So bear with me, you guys. Um, set those over there. So one of you will get that card if you're a winner. There's the other one I did. Then this sample is one that um, my upline did at one of our meetings. And I took this same layout idea. Those are one and a half inch by one and a half inch paper squares. And I did that to create these two cards here. Little tips here. This is from our iridescent wreaths. These are just cut off from the wreaths. So you can take and open them up like that and make a strand. And then you can take and, and cut off those little tiny pieces and put them down with like a glue dot. And then I just put one of those epoxy droplets in the middle. So that's that card. Um, another little tip on this card is that I used the shimmery, let's see, it's called frost white shimmer paint. And you just take a sponge, take off the cap, turn it over onto the sponge, blot off a little bit of it, and then just kind of dab on some on the corners. But here you can see that there's an actual stamp image. So I took my stamp image from the set and I actually put shimmer paint directly onto it and then stamped it onto my paper. And that's how I got those um, looks. And it washes off real easily, so then you just scrub it in your stamp and scrub or whatever. This one here has the classic label punch along with sentiment, a sentiment from the Itty Bitty Greetings stamp set. And then there's a half inch strip of cardstock behind there that all I did was take and use the Everyday Label Punch and punched it like this to get that little layer behind the classic label punch piece. So a couple other fun cards. More, hang on. <laughs> All right, we have these wonderful clear tiny treat boxes and I shared on a paper pumpkin video how you can fit six of these Ghirardelli treat chocolate pieces in here. So you just put them all in like that and the thinner ones, you can get eight. So if you're trying to figure out what to fill these boxes with, you can fill them with that. This one here is filled with six of them. This is not done with pieces from the Frosted Floral Suite. This is from a paper pumpkin kit from August. But I liked this idea so much that I wanted to take the die uh, vellum, the pieces that are in the kit, it's a little vellum piece here, and I cut them out and for this one, I colored some of them and left some of them clear, clear vellum, and I decorated a container very similar to that one. This one I ended up not liking as much, so I took and left it uncolored for this one. And I love this one a whole bunch. This one's using the thinner um, Ghirardelli, so there's eight of them in there. But I love it because you can still see the chocolates and it doesn't distract from the um, decorations on top. So here we go again, these are just die cut leaves from this set of dies, and I just cut them down into different sizes and layered them up to make a flower. This one here is die cut from that other die that's in the set, the little branch piece. Punched out a half inch circle from that same metallic paper, I believe it's called platinum or champagne, can't remember. <laughs> and then there's the clear um, epoxy droplets on there. So very fun, very, very fun. The last two ideas are these cards here. So this one's just a note card and it's using the stamps, some ink, in colors that don't coordinate necessarily with the designer paper and then just a little bit of that polka dot tool ribbon put on with a glue dot. So you can make very pretty cards just by owning some very, you know, very few supplies. You don't have to own it all. This card here is done with the dies and the stamp sets and of course the tool and punch. This is a this is that everyday label punch again, only this time it's a little bit wider paper. So that's how I got that look. And then um, this bouquet 
I did by just running it through, all those pieces through the Big Shot only three times. Just three times to get that full bouquet because we have multiples of those little tiny roses. And this last card, I haven't finished it yet because I can't find her full video, but a demonstrator by the name of Mary Detheridge, she did a video on how to make this into a shutter, uh, shutter card. Um, the inside is going to be more spectacular, but I love the outside and I could figure out how to make that. So, plus it showed off this fun paper and it's a cat card. We now own a cat. His name is Lucky and we're lucky to have him and he's lucky that he didn't have to go to the pound. <laughs> so, or not the pound, but the uh, animal humane society because my neighbor needed to um, give him to somebody and, and we fostered him and then we decided to keep him and we love him. So this is a lucky card. All right. So those were my samples. Let's see if I can kind of spread them out on the table so you can get a quick look of all the things that I shared. There were a lot. There were too many. I might not get them all on the table here. We'll shove those off to the side. Lots and lots of ideas. <laughs> There's the main card though, right? Gotta see that one. Can you see them all? This is crazy. There's too many ideas this time. And there's the bag. Can we get the bag in there? No, we can't. <laughs> Here, let me get me out of it, out of there. There, now we can shove some things over. Awesome, right? Too many, oh, that's not, there. That's, a, that's not frosted floral. There we go. <laughs> oh, fun, fun, fun. Too many ideas. <laughs> All right. So we have prizes, prizes to give away. And I hope that you have been commenting while I have been demonstrating. I hope that you have not fallen asleep. I hope that I have not lost you. I shared a ton this time because I wanted to bring that demonstration to you all. It was just an amazing, fun event. Um, so let me bring the prizes out here. All right, and let's bring it back to the table. So these are the prizes. We have the pick, uh, take your pick tool, which I didn't use very much of, but I have a full new one ready to go. And then I have something that's related because it has pick in the name. This is a stamp set that I have. It's a new condition stamp set called Pick a Pennant. Sorry, I didn't have two of these, but that is what I'm giving away for prizes. And the first person gets to choose. That first person also gets to choose between one of these two cards, okay? So you get to pick um, a card with it and the second winner will get the other card and other prize. Let's move to the computer <laughs> so we can see who our winner is going to be. Oops, we still gotta get on the right screen, hang on. And we'll do a refresh. And it's gonna make me log in again, so hang on. All right. Okay, now we're on the computer. And it's logging in. I promise you. Hopefully we won't get kicked off the internet. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was fun, wasn't it, you guys? Oh my goodness, lots of things. By the way, I'm going to put a link to the holiday catalog in my video description. So if you are new to stamping and you don't know how to get to that catalog or to the online store, I'll share that with you. Um, I'll also share a link to joining my Stampers with Art group. If you are not a demonstrator right now and you would like to join um, my group or any group that um, would be able to go to Creative Connections next year. Why is this not working, you guys? Holy cow. There we go. Um, <laughs> so we're going to pick a winner right now. Make sure that it doesn't uh, disappear from us. So if you want to attend that event next fall, you can either be in my group or one of our Minnesota local demonstrators groups. Our first winner is, so I will give you a link to my group, Tiffany Anderson. Yay! Awesome! You're the first winner, Tiffany. So if you're still with me and you didn't fall asleep, make sure that you message me or I'll try to get in touch with you and you can pick your prize. Let's do one more winner. And that winner is Linda, Linda Brady. Linda Knight Brady also gets a prize. Yay! So congratulations to you ladies. Uh, also, there will be a link to my website in the description. So next week, we're gonna be on a, uh, we're gonna go every week now, you guys. I promise you that I will try not to take any Wednesdays off now that we're back from our summer break. So next week, September 26th at 11 a.m., I will be back to share another live paper crafting class. It won't be this intense. This one really had a lot to share. 
<laughs> but I wanted to bring it all to you. So thank you all for joining me today. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.